Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Gareth Edwards. As you can see, I'm not the Welsh rugby legend, so apologies to anyone who's disappointed by that. But thank you for joining this broadcast by Gospel Wales tonight. I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes this evening about the love of God. I don't know what kind of love you've experienced over the years. I don't know what kind of love you've felt from parents and partners, family and friends. And I don't know whether you feel particularly loved right now, but I want to tell you that you most certainly are. You most certainly are loved because God loves you. And God loves you more than anyone else ever has. God loves you more than anyone else ever will. God loves you more than anyone else ever could. So I really want you to grasp it tonight, that God loves you. And that love was displayed on the cross of Calvary. You know, it's easy to say that you love someone, isn't it? But unless you show that love by your actions, it's not real love at all. Well, God's love is a real love. And God showed his love for us in an unmistakable way at the cross. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 that God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And tonight I want to answer three questions about God's love as we explore this wonderful subject together. Question number one is, has God's love been earned? Has God's love been earned? Have we done anything to deserve God's amazing love? The, the answer to that question is a resounding no. You see, the reality is that throughout our lives, we've done nothing at all to deserve God's love. We've all been guilty of disrespecting God, not giving him the place and position he really deserves in our lives. We've been guilty too of disregarding God, living our lives at times as if he didn't matter or even as if he didn't exist. Uh, and sadly, we all know that we've also been guilty of disobeying God. And um, we've all done things at times that we've known fine well God would find offensive. And while we all likely try to live good lives, I'm sure everyone who's watching tonight tries to live a good life. The truth is that we've sadly all got things in our lives that God finds repulsive. And you might think that that sounds like a very strong word to use. But friends, that's the truth of it. The Bible tells us that there are things in all of our lives that God finds offensive and repulsive, and the Bible calls these things sins. You see, we, we lie and we lust and we lose our temper and we use bad language, and, and that really is just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? The, the truth is that our lives are full of things that God disapproves of. Our national poet here in Scotland is Rabbi Burns. And in one of his well-known poems, he, he wrote these words, Oh, that God the gift would give us to see ourselves as others see us. It would be an extremely interesting, possibly quite a painful thing to see our lives through the eyes of others, wouldn't it? And to see what other people really thought of us. But it's a much more important thing for us to see our lives as God sees them and to understand just how serious our sin is in his eyes. Because God is holy, God is righteous, and God doesn't treat our sins lightly, even if we do. And let's be honest, we often do treat our sins lightly. But these sins in our lives, they're so serious to God that the Bible says they're going to keep us out of heaven. And they're ultimately going to land us in hell and eventually in the lake of fire. And so in answer to our first question tonight, we have to conclude that we've really done nothing to earn God's affections. We've done nothing at all to deserve God's love. But question number two is, has God's love been evidenced? Has God's love been evidenced? If we don't really deserve God's love, does he actually love us? And where should we look for the evidence of that love? Well, people often make the mistake of looking at their circumstances for evidence of God's love. And as they find themselves in difficult situations, maybe through illness or bereavement or possibly as a result of a troublesome upbringing, or maybe because of ill treatment from other people, they begin to wonder, if God really loves me, why am I going through this? If God really loves me, why is he allowing me to experience that? Maybe these are some of the questions that you've asked in the past. 
And as they look at their circumstances, they, they call into question whether God really loves them at all. But friends, here's the thing. The evidence of God's love is not seen primarily in our circumstances. It's seen in the cross. It was there on the cross that God displayed his love for all the world to see. It's true that love can be evidenced in different ways, isn't it? You know, sometimes love is seen in the distance that someone is willing to travel. People undertake great journeys to demonstrate their love for others, don't they? Here in Scotland, there's a well-known song that was written by a band called The Proclaimers a number of years ago. Some of you will no doubt be familiar with it. The chorus says, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at your door. And really, it's, it's a love song about a man who's willing to walk a thousand miles to show his love for a particular girl. Well, a thousand miles is a long way to travel, especially on foot. But the greatest distance ever traveled out of love was when the Lord Jesus Christ, God's son, left his home in heaven, a place of splendor and perfection, where he sat upon a throne and was worshipped by the angels. And he came all the way down to this earth, to a place of squalor and poverty, where he was laid in a manger and was despised and rejected and hated by mankind. And from that manger, his journey eventually led him to Calvary's cross. And every step of that long and lonely journey was motivated by love for us. That was evidence of his love. An old hymn says, love brought him down from the glory. Love made him come from the sky. Love in his heart for the sinner led him to suffer and die. But of course, sometimes love is seen in the price that someone is willing to pay. I was having a look online at the price of engagement rings recently. Uh, really just for the purposes of this uh, meeting, not for any other particular reason. And I have to say, it's pretty much put me off the idea for life because the average price of an engagement ring is apparently about £1,700. Uh, a staggering amount of money. But of course, people are willing to pay that price in order to express their love. And some of you who have purchased engagement rings uh, in the past will know all about that. If you think £1,700 is a lot of money, which it is, apparently the most expensive engagement ring ever purchased was one that was given to the American singer Mariah Carey a few years ago. Now, brace yourself for this. It cost a staggering £8 million. I'm not sure whether that's love or just plain madness. But, you know, the greatest price ever paid out of love was when the Lord Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. Not with silver or gold, not in pounds or dollars, but with his own precious blood on the cross. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sins. And there on the cross, his blood was shed and his life was given to pay the penalty of mankind's sin. The Bible says that on the cross, he, the perfect, sinless son of God, the creator of the universe, he was wounded for our transgressions. And on the cross, he, the perfect, sinless son of God, the creator of the universe, he was crushed for our iniquities, for our sins. All the pain, all the punishment, all the suffering, all the shame, it was all for us. It, it was all so that we could be forgiven. It was all endured out of love. An old hymn says, was it for me? For me alone, the Saviour left his glorious throne. The dazzling splendour of the sky, was it for me he came to die? The chorus goes on to say, it was for me. Yes, all for me. O oh, love of God, so great, so free. O oh, wondrous love, I'll shout and sing, he died for me, my Lord and King. Has God's love been evidenced? Friends, Turn your eyes to Calvary's cross. God so loved the world, so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. But the final question tonight is, has God's love been embraced? Has God's love been embraced? Has God's love been earned? Definitely not. 
Has God's love been evidenced? Absolutely, yes. But has God's love been embraced? Well, that's a much more personal question, isn't it? That's a question that each one of us would really need to answer individually. And so let me pose the question to you tonight. Let me ask you, think carefully about this. Have you personally embraced God and embraced his wonderful love? Have you ever embraced him by, by turning from your sins, by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, and by opening the door of your heart to him? Has there been a moment in your life when you've done that? If not, I wonder if you'll do it tonight. The Bible pictures the Lord Jesus standing and knocking on the door of our hearts, seeking entry into our lives. He's demonstrated his great love for us. He's died on the cross for our sins. He's defeated death and risen victoriously from the grave. And now he wants to come into our hearts. He wants to come in to forgive our sins. He wants to come in and fill and flood our lives with his peace, with his love, with his hope, with his joy. He wants to bless us with his so great salvation. But you know, he'll only ever enter where he's invited. The Lord Jesus will never barge his way into someone's life if they don't want him there. He'll only ever enter where he's invited. And today he's waiting for each one of us to make a personal decision, a personal decision to, to open the door and trust in him and welcome him in. The sad reality is that the majority of people never do. The majority of people in the world today keep the door closed to the Lord Jesus. I hope that you won't be one of them. You see, if you keep the door of your heart closed to Christ, the Bible says he'll keep the door of heaven closed to you. And so I hope that none of you will, will, will leave the Lord Jesus out of your life. I hope that if you've never done so before, you'll open the door and let him in to be your savior and to be your Lord and live the rest of your life, however long or short that may be, in the full enjoyment of God's wonderful love. May God bless you as you contemplate these things. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short presentation. And if you have any questions or you want to discuss things further, please do get in touch. And I'm sure someone will be delighted to speak with you. Thank you.